Time for us to uh, go to our good friends from the Lakeville Journal. It's time for this week in the Lakeville Journal. In the center studio, Cynthia is there. Good morning, Cynthia. Welcome back. Good morning. Thank you. And who is in there with you? It's, uh, well, who are you? What's I'm your Quincy. name? Hi. It's Quincy. Yeah. Quincy. All right. Nice to see you, Quincy, even though I can't see you because he's sitting in the one seat that I don't have a view of. But that's okay, Quincy. Uh, we have room for him in case Ann shows up. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Live on the Lakeville <laughs> Journal line, it's Janet Manko. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Yeah, the Lakeville Journal line. That's right. So now I just want to uh, to announce to everybody who's listening that uh, we did it before we came on the air. Our new signal is now on the air, 97.5 FM. You can uh, hear us now from Millerton to Pauling, clear as a bell down the 22 corridor, and from uh, Cornwall Bridge up to Mohawk Mountain, and from Cornwall Bridge down to Kent. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. That's great. So there's the last piece of our jigsaw puzzle that we call yeah. our signal coverage yeah. here. Good. All right. Great. So now let us go to the front page of the Lakeville Journal. And uh, something that uh, I talked about and we, we covered a little earlier this week, and you guys have a full report on it. I give a lot of credit for the Hotchkiss School, uh, 200,000 pages. Uh, they released a full report, an independent report. It's on their website. Uh, about uh, about what we deal with nowadays in society in every level, it seems. Did you say 200,000 pages? 200,000 pages. That's not the... Okay, so so what they have online is the summary of the report. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you can get the full report if you want it. Okay. So, um, as Marshall said, Hotchkiss School actually I, it did an admirable job of confronting um, concerns about sexual abuse. They investigated all the way back to the 1940s and and found this the most striking, um, the heaviest amount of evidence and of incidents after the school went co-ed in the 1970s. And um, it, the uh, I would say there's a very strong effort on the part of the school to just say, this is what happened and these are the people that did it and um, we feel confident based on our research that this is what happened and uh, a tough story for the community. Um, I think that people tend to think of these private schools as being a separate or other entity, but of course, the headmasters are all part of our community, and the people who are named in the report are all part of the community, and include people who are still here in the area. So um, we we did a, we have a link, or actually we have um, the address for the website, so people can go on to the Hotchkiss School's website and read the 36-page summary of the report, um, not the 200,000 page <laughs> but if you want that too yeah yeah, go ahead. Go, yeah um you can get that as well but um you know a tough a tough report um but uh we, we i have to credit them for their openness in in the way that they've presented the information and it affects our community we we have been sitting here uh during this me too movement and we have been watching other communities affected by what has happened and now in our own community uh we are shaken to the core Quite honestly, with a few of the names that have come out, yeah, uh, and and dealing with it, but uh, that's why I give Hotchkiss a lot of credit. Uh, instead of possibly having things dribble and drabble out over years and years and years, right? Uh, they spent a lot of money and they put this report out there for everybody. They're not commenting on it, but you know what? Well, they, they don't commented have to. on it in the sense that they put yeah, out a very they, contrite, they yeah, they apparently sincere yeah. letter, which is to their credit. Also, they don't have to comment on it. It's there for all to, re to yeah. read. Um, they don't have to explain it, and, and they don't try, they're not trying to explain it away. And, you know, unfortunately, actually, this is not the first sex abuse case we've had here. We've had other schools and who have not, in my opinion, been quite as um, forthcoming. And um, we talk in the article a lot about how this investigation came about. And, you know, credit goes to the class of 1977, which is one of the first co-ed classes where the students were preparing for their reunion. And they said, you know what? Some stuff happened there, and we're not okay with it, and um, that we want this done. And the school listened, and and started an investigation and then the alums came back and said, we don't like the person that you're having do this investigation, we think they're gonna sweep it under. And the school, again, to their credit, said, okay. And they hired another investigator and said, "Say what, chips chips fall, here we go. Well, uh, anyway, so that's Hotchkiss School. And just remember, I always say this to everybody, uh, what happens at Hotchkiss, what happens at all the private schools, what happens in our s society at every level, uh, it is not an isolated incident, it is something that has been prevalent throughout our society in all levels, all races, all ethnicities, all income levels, yep. whether you're private school, public school, private business, public business, uh, it all equals out, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Yep. Uh, 
so let's move on here now, uh, and something better than that. How about uh, the good old summer fair time? <laughs> yeah, Winstead had the. I think this is the last of well of the of the town summer fairs, and of course now we're moving heavily into the um, ag fair season. I believe Dutch and, Dutchess County Fair is on right now. Goshen Fair is coming up over Labor Day weekend. One of the and Columbia County events. Fair, Columbia County Fair, which has gotten very big. Ah, yes, as it should, and um, of course. For people who are not here from the country like we are, um, it starts with the smaller fairs such as the 4-H fair, and it moves up to, you know, the larger fairs such as Goshen, and then moves on to the really big, you know, regional fairs such as the Big E, which will be coming up later in the but year. But also something that you know about, the machinery shutdown should be coming up soon in Kent. Yes, that's at the end of September, <laughs> so one of my favorite events of the year, as Marshall will <laughs> indicate, um, the K Connecticut Antique Machinery Association, which is still open now, and you can still go on weekends and see all these antique steam engines, some of them very big, some of them very old, but also people you know, riding around on funny little McCormick you know, this or that, or is with popping, you know, uh, water, steam-powered engines. And the power down, which is much bigger than the power up in spring, yeah. it is the funniest thing you've ever seen. It's like being in that Star Wars bar scene with all of the strange. <laughs> it's just great, and I highly recommend it, um, especially if the weather's good. It usually goes on for three days, so you have a chance of getting a very excellent afternoon there. All right, uh, and uh, there's a new director uh, for the uh, – uh, for the center, Christine Sargent at the Northeast Community Center. Nice article by Carol Nealon that she wrote for our uh, Millerton News and, of course, the Northeast Community Center. Not just a Millerton-based uh, organization, something that Jenny Hansel had, uh, a Sharon native, a Sharon resident, sorry, who is now living in Massachusetts. Uh, Jenny really grew it from a very small, sort of part-timey volunteer kind of thing into really quite a big, fancy organization with a lot of programs that benefit you know, people on both sides of the border and um, such things as the farm market, which is really an extraordinarily good farm market. So um, the incredible Jennifer Dowley, who had similarly grown the Berkshire Tacona Community Foundation from a very small local thing into a huge multi-million dollar philanthropic organization, has nicely had nicely stepped in as the interim, and now they have a new um, head of a uh, permanent head of Northeast Community Center, a really nice portrait of her by Carol Neeland, and really a sense that she understands where people came from and wants to help. All right, uh, and the primary field narrowing. That's right. Um, really, went for, in my experience as a Northwest Corner journalist, one of the most talked about primary elections. Usually people seem fairly ambivalent or indifferent, but everybody really seemed very uh, keen to have as many registered voters come out and take uh, take part in this. Um, our candidates for state rep and state senate were not um, in primaries. Those elections will come up in November. Janet and I are already working on the schedule of um, – letters to the editor and endorsements and our interviews with the candidates. And Janet is already working hard on a possible debate. Um, but we do have a chart that Patrick Sullivan put together with his own two little hands while I was on vacation. And uh, that is uh, inside next to this issue's most important thing, which is the bus routes. I was going to say the bus routes. The bus routes. Hey, finally, a picture about the uh, Esterbrook Intern Award winner. Yes, who's sitting right next to me, and we're very proud of him. And he's like, why do we have to talk about this? But um, did you have a nice time as a summer intern? Did yeah, you? I did. I think that he had a great time. Are you going to come back next year when you get your driver's license? Mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the most fun thing you did? Um, I like the Kiwi article. The Kiwi article was fun. The Kiwi article was extraordinary. We sat him down and said, quick, write something about Kiwis. He wrote the best article that's ever been written about Kiwis. All right. Editor's Day Trip Notebook of Bernie Drew. Colorful Gardens. There's, you know, so many great uh, organizations here that make conserved space open to all of us. And Bernie went to Nom Keeg, which is part of the Trustees of Reservations. And um, Eric Ruquist, I guess, had been, uh, who shortly after left and went to another more interesting job, equally interesting job, but had led them on a nice tour of the gardens there. And yeah, this is a great time of year. Everything is in full flower. It's not just the tomatoes and the corn that are up. It's also flowering plants. And he is strongly recommending you take a day trip. All right, uh, inside, uh, back to the dark side once again, uh, but uh, a story that uh, we, we you have to cover, we, we've covered, and that is uh, uh, the uh, military resident, Christopher, me getting 22 years uh, to life uh, for the rape of a minor. And not just a minor, but a child, and yeah. um, very sad, but, uh, but a fairly swift resolution, and I think that's very healing for the community. But on a happier note, to the right of that, there's an, uh, a rare bird that, ever, and it's funny to me, you feel like these birds are just going to like fly in and fly out, but this bird has taken up residence in Pittsfield on some lake, Lake Ononta, and all the birders that I know have all been going up there, and they all know each other, and they see each other, and they're all writing into us. So we have a very interesting explanation of 
why it, it does not mean that the world is ending, that there is a brown booby up here. They don't explain how this bird got such a silly name, but uh, an extraordinary sighting here. All right, and uh, Kent presents uh, on page A3, which has really become a major thing across the country and uh, and rivals other big uh, events right. that have been in and around for years and years before it. Ben and Donna Rosen, who are Kent residents and just wonderful people, had started this a few years ago, and they were sitting at their house thinking, we'd like to give back. We'd like to do something for this community. And, of course, lots of people think that, but they don't do it. And then um, somebody called them and said, hey, I'm in Aspen at the Aspen um, the Aspen uh, Institute Festival, which is an ex another extraordinary festival of people who are thinkers and leaders. And um, Ben and Donna said, that's what we'll do. We'll have an idea festival. And if you've ever met Ben Rosen, the most honey-tongued, smooth guy you've ever met, just you would never say no to him. He's so lovely. And he just uh, talked dozens of people who are um, leaders in uh, in organizations not just in the East Coast, but as you said, across the country, into coming here to Little Kent. They don't make any money. They're just coming for the opportunity to talk to other people who are interesting and to take part in a really, um, you know, kind of like the, what was that thing, the Renaissance Festival down in uh, North Carolina, just a chance to be around other really interesting people. And every year after these talks are held, people that I know come out and say, I People who are smart and well-informed about that, I didn't expect that. That was a different, like my mind has expanded to see this in a different way. So the um, the, the money, it's quite expensive to attend, the money that they collect. Most of it goes to um, local charities. I think there were 38 charities or something last year that they, um, that they uh, helped out. And all of the talks are videotaped, and they're all free online at kentpresents.org. And uh, our Susan Silver uh, attended attended this for the first year, and which is the one you said before that was uh, um, that we yeah. compared it to Aspen. Aspen. She's been to Aspen uh, five years in a row, and now this this is her first year. Yeah. She said this festival is better than yeah. the one in Aspen. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet they know how to do it, Ben and Donna. They're amazing people. All right, feeling the water. Yeah, and my reporter Leela Hawkins said. I, I'm kind of interested in this. And I said, I don't know. The river's running pretty high. I bet they cancel it. And she said, I'm just going to go and see what happens. And just wrote this wonderful article about Paula Joseph Jones and the four uh, hardy dancers who she had standing in that fast-running river, which I think that we all need to remind each other. It's not a good time to be fooling around in that river right now. It's very fast and very deep. Well, they canceled one performance in another river because the river was too. And they they found a spot at Housatonic that they got the okay to do it in. And I think they're doing it again this this weekend on the, yes. the 25th. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's you know, lovely. And the idea is, you know, you, the water isn't just something to look at. You feel it. And um, it's kind of groovy. Our area is losing another reverend. The Reverend Celery is moving to North Carolina. Right. And not just the Reverend Celery, but also his wife has been very yeah. active and has been a big um, uh, historian, has worked very closely with the Scottsville Memorial Library, putting together their um their, their uh, archives on, on World War One or two, I'm not sure which, but um, I believe she's a genealogist, which is something that people love here. So we'll be sorry to see them go, and I don't believe that they have chosen a new uh, pastor for St. John's, but um, I'm sure that we will hear about it soon. And uh, Cornwall Historical Society has a new curator. Susie Fate. She's very interesting. She's got a very interesting background and experience. You know, really a world-class um, person, has worked at all the big museums, has been a registrar, which is a big deal at um, museums, m keeping track of all the diverse works that come in and out. So she's seen a lot. She knows how to organize stuff. She knows how to categorize stuff. She's been an art handler. She knows how to hang work. So it's going to be very interesting to see what she does there. All right. Uh, proposed solar site at the uh, North Canaan landfill has advanced a little bit. That's right. And, you know, North Canaan, people tend to think of North Canaan as being a little um, backward, but it's not. I, you really, the more time you spend in North Canaan, it's very interesting stuff going on there, including the possibility of putting in solar panels at the landfill. And why not? It's open space. And uh, Shaw has a, a trio of stories about the new principal, a national radio show at the Tort Museum, and uh, a local uh, charities benefiting. That's right. A concert that somebody put on just to help the homeless and the, those in need. Um, new principal at the Bachelor uh, Early Learning Center, which is very sweet. She looks very young and nice. And um, our own Ralph Nader, interviewed by David Barsamian, who is um, who's also, I would say, somebody who's uh, uh, deep into examination of the contemporary world. Um, an interesting article about his interview with uh, Ralph Nader. All right, and of course, the bus schedules. And, yeah. uh, Such so we a discussed them. big job. I and I want to give a big shout out to Michelle Way at All Star Transportation, who you know, used to be 
And also to, <laughs> to Fran Paddock, who for many years typed up the entire bus schedule and did it perfectly. Um, and then over the years, All Star has been sending us um, ele electronic versions of it that we've had to, usually it takes me about four or five days to format it. And um, Michelle does such a good job that um, we actually were able to do the whole thing in four hours, uh, Leela Hawken and I. Um, and then Janet heroically went and fact checked the entire thing. So we hope that this is very helpful to everybody on the first day of school, which is Monday. And if you're a freshman at Housatonic, your first day is Friday. Right. And so everyone knows these only publish in the paper. We do not put them up online. So do buy the paper if you want to know what your schedule is. Did you guys all go out for a drink or dinner after? <laughs> I went to Seattle. <laughs> it went on vacation. I went to, yeah. <laughs> they they came in. I said to Janet, I texted Janet in the morning and I said, I have this bad feeling that the bus schedules are going to come in today, right before I go off on vacation. And sure enough, like they literally came in as I was texting her. Yeah, and but, speak of heroic. She just stayed late to uh, work on it with Leela and pull it all together. Yeah, it's great, though. We did it in four hours. All right, now let's go on to the editorial. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, inspiration of the Lakeville Journal, Bob Esbrook, life remains on there, really. Yes, right. And so this is, uh, we're thinking about this now because of the internship award that Quincy was the recipient of. And we, you know, we've had other recipients since 2015. And it's just been a great uh, time to remember Bob, who was, uh, y you know, he had a long history in national and international journalism and came here and just totally embraced being a small town editor and publisher and gave us uh, such an example of uh, what our mission is in our community. So we, we do love thinking about him, and uh, we also thank Salisbury Rotary for thinking about him the same way and honoring him this way. So we talk about that in more depth and lots of good letters um, about all different topics and don't miss the recipe for the Mulligan Burger. I came out. Yeah, I came out of our, our online experience. It with, did. With, yeah, with, yeah. With, with the with the with Bill, Nol Nolten. Yeah, yeah. Bill Nolten and uh, I can remember as a kid, my mother ordering Mulligan Burgers at at the Woodland. It's that's a good amazing. recipe for coleslaw. And they had great, great, great milkshakes. But anyways, that's besides the point. Don Nolten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so we we have done this over the years. When I saw. Um, Don show up on your Facebook feed. I thought, oh yeah, it's time to get that Mulligan burger <laughs> recipe in again because every so often, and he uh, has often written about it. As you know, he's uh, uh, pretty eloquent himself, and uh, we were we were happy to get it in again. And hope everybody tries it. And he would love to know what you think of it. Whenever we get into heated political debate, we always go to the Mulligan burger. That's right. Here's something we <laughs> have we in do. common. It's very funny. It's very and, funny. And so this is. This is actually why I put this on the opinion page. Let's hope this is something we can all agree on. Yeah, but the letters uh, from Cricket Valley uh, to uh, the covered bridge warning, uh, forgiveness, I mean, a lot of letters this week. All different topics, yeah, tax equity, um, thank you letters. And, yeah, uh, the letter about the covered bridge is interesting. Read it and think about it. And, yeah, take a ride over the bridge. All right, uh, now let's go on to the viewpoint. I love, uh, once again, Peter Steiner. There's more than the <laughs> forecast, enemy of the people. Right? <laughs> That's right. Isn't that good? I mean, really, uh, he just uh, makes us laugh despite ourselves. So <laughs> really good. Don't miss that. And good pieces on Fortnite. If you don't know what we're talking about, give a read to Bill Schmick's article, the column on the viewpoint page. And uh, something in the air empowering women, Virujan Frangian, very interesting from a, the, a look of a different culture and our culture. And Peter Riva on land grant colleges. And, and, uh, and the scandal of land grant colleges. Exactly. Which, which is, a, 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 you don't see much talk about that. So that's a great thing to see it in here in your local paper. Yeah. Uh, Peter Riva is often thinking about things that uh, we would all benefit from knowing about and thinking about more, so we're happy to have him in our pages. And he's in the Miller to News every week. We don't always have room for him. All right, and a nice little appreciation for Nancy Tuckerman from Ann Day. Yes. Isn't it? Really lovely. 
Uh, now, on to food for, for hell. There's tomatoes. So the headline is, forgive me, Mafalda, if I got this wrong, but guess what? I got it wrong. So I already have an email from Mafalda's daughter, Tina, saying, no, 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 that's not right. So um, <laughs> next week, I'm already working on it. We'll do a story on Parmigiano-Reggiano and how to store it and um, the difference between hard cheeses and soft cheeses in terms of your heart and your health. And, of course, it is the season of pesto and fresh tomato sauce. And I will have the, the corrected, slightly corrected, forgive me, Mafalda recipe. Which is don't forget to saute the onions and the garlics first. But um, a very easy uh, fresh summer tomato sauce from a master cook, Mafalda Skokolo, out in uh, Seattle, Washington. And uh, we have my, my Parmesan cheese never used to be stored. It's gone right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what Tina said. I basically. use it on everything. Yeah, that's what Tina. And I went to Cooks Illustrated, and that's basically what they said too. Because I always buy it, like I buy five pieces at yeah. a time at Whole Foods, and and I'm always like, yeah, it gets really hard and kind of you know icky. And so their thing is, yeah, you. You immediately you need to just um, the fr Whole Foods says get small or uh, Cooks Illustrated says get small pieces use them right away and um, if you read the Lakeville Journal next week you'll find out what Mafalda does she buys five pounds at a time and then uh, you'll find out how she stores it alright and uh, Quincy your uh, 2220 mile walk story uh, yeah so uh, last week Cynthia and I kind of walked around Kent um, or drove around and uh, we found three hikers to interview uh, we found uh, uh, thin, thin Blue Line, Elephant, and Lost and Found, and each of them have their own story. And yeah. All right, let's go to Compass because I'll tell you what, the Sharon Playhouse is wrapping up a good season with yeah. always Patsy Cline. Yeah, I have to say it's two things people love, Patsy Cline and the Sharon Playhouse. They've had such a great summer. Yeah. Everybody just loves um, the guys that are running it and uh, a lot of great will there. But, you know, what's not to like about a show full of Patsy Cline? I mean, how great. So Leanne Graham has a review, and, of course, guess what? He liked it. Um, we have uh, also Leon talking about a show at the Ober Gallery. Um, Rob Ober, interesting guy, uh, great tennis player, history teacher, and um, Kent native, but also grew up largely in Russia where his father was a diplomat. And an interesting show of art that he found through Instagram. And I have to say, I love Instagram. And, and what they're doing this weekend at Music Mountain with the Paint and Mountain, it's a, it's a free event that goes from 11 to 1, includes a concert for free by the cassette court. Oh, it sounds like so much fun. I know. And, and you know, I have to say, this is how I know that Nick Gordon has passed passed away because I never would have not known about this. I, f I learned about it in Compass, so I will definitely be going. And so it's a morning of people coming out and painting under the watchful eye of in Vincent and Coniglios. Um, and then they're going to go indoors and listen to a concert and um, bring a picnic if you like. And, uh, and Vincent will paint to the music. How cool is that? All right. You've got Shakespeare and Company's Outdoors. Yeah, really, you know, you like it, a yeah. wonderful review from C.B. Wismar, who's just such a funny, interesting guy, and kind of puts As You Like It in perspective as being the play that comes between Julius Caesar and Hamlet, which he says, you know, are kind of not exactly knee slappers, but he's like, this is a true romantic comedy and a, a wonderful production at Shakespeare and Company. I love any play where everybody is wearing overalls. Like, what can you say? And I've heard <laughs> so much about Crazy Rich Asians. I've got to go. I've got to see it. I've got to see it. Every I single person I know is going to go see it. <laughs> and I'm very proud of Sophia Kaufman, a former Lakeville Journal intern, who has just is so great and came back for several years in a row, Quincy, um, and continued to work with us and um, reviews Crazy Rich Asians and just every single person in the office who read this said it's the perfect review and um, it's informative and enticing. And if you don't want to read it after uh, having uh, read this review, then you just don't like movies. And Marston Epworth wrote about a, you know the fascinating and... Um, and, and sad life of Lillian Hellman in a production that's being done at St. John and the Wilderness Church in Copac. And of course, the calendar that Anne worked so hard on and full of exciting activities. And my gosh, there's a lot going on in the next couple weeks. Well, how about uh, this? Uh, the, the renewed, rejuvenated downtown Lakeville is going to have another art stroll this Saturday from 5 till 7. That's going to be great. And don't forget, also in Sharon, I think September 8th, the it art goes, walk. That was the most fun I have ever had on the Sharon Green last year when they did it for the first time. It's going to be amazing. And last year, there was a big theater event that was going on on the same night. This year, I believe um, everybody everybody was careful to not schedule stuff on that same weekend. It's better than trick-or-treating for adults. It's so fun. All right. And uh, and uh, so there we go. Uh, and, uh, of course, more uh, ad online at tricordernews.com, also on Facebook. And, by gosh, you can get it at the newsstands, and you can get it also delivered to your home. Yes. Correct. That's right. And right. please do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we, will, we will speak to you guys next week. Have a good week. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that is uh, this week in the Lakeville Journal here on Robin Hood Radio. Once again, their website is tricornernews.com.
com, and they're on Facebook.